Hello everyone, this is your host Urvashi Chahan. Welcome to Quotes Today by Live Law, your one-step destination to all legal developments in the country. Let us start. Starting with an update on a news that went viral a few days ago. Prajwal Rivanna, grandson of ex-PM of India, HD Dev Gowda, and a leader of political party Janta Dal Secular is a member of parliament from Hassan district in Karnataka and has contended from the same constituency in a coalition with the BJP. Recently, he has been under scrutiny with allegations of rape, sexual harassment and sexual assault of several women and shooting over 2,900 obscene videos with multiple women without their consent and publishing it. Karnataka Chief Minister Siddharamaya had taken matter into cognizance and appointed a special investigation team to investigate into this matter. After the election in Hassan district took place last month on 26th, Ravanna flew to Germany using his diplomatic passport. Police filed an FIR against him on 28th April after one of the women complained against him for sexual assault. The FIR also named his father, H.D. Rivanna, who is also an MLA in Karnataka. The matter was taken up to the Special Court for Elected Representatives, which decided to issue an arrest warrant for the absconding Prajwal Rivanna in Germany. His father was arrested for kidnapping of a woman, but later was released on bail by the Special Court. A blue corner notice was also issued to Ravanna. Blue corner notice is issued by Interpol after a member state requests for it. It facilitates sharing critical crime-related information, including criminal records, verification and locating individuals. After the order of the special court, Prajwal Ravanna was ordered by the SIT to appear before them on 31st May. To this, he released a video confirming his return on 30th May. Now, Rivanna has moved the special court seeking anticipatory bail. The special court will hear the special public prosecutor to make his submission on the anticipatory bail tomorrow. Also, let me tell you here, the allegations against Rivanna first came to light in June last year, but they had obtained a court order restraining the media from reporting it. In another update, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal today moved to Delhi court seeking regular bail in the money laundering case related to the alleged liquor policy scam in which he was arrested in March this year. Kejriwal has also filed a plea seeking interim bail for several days on medical grounds. Presently, as you know, he is on interim bail granted by the Supreme Court in his plea against his arrest by the Enforcement Directorate. The interim bail ends on 1st June and he is to surrender on 2nd June. Yesterday, the Supreme Court Registry had refused to list his application for extension of the interim bail. Today, Additional Solicitor General S.V. Raju appearing for ED sought time to file response to the pleas, submitting that there were several suppressions which ED wants to bring on record. Raju said that Kejriwal was not in custody. He had been granted interim bail by the Supreme Court and that he is today in Punjab campaigning for the election. Raju said that though the present plea was filed seeking interim bail on medical grounds, but his health did not hinder him from campaigning. Special Judge Kaveri Baveja of Rao's Avenue Courts issued notice and sought response of the Enforcement Directorate in the pleas. The matter will now be heard on 1st June at 2 p.m. Stay tuned. The Supreme Court has answered the question of whether a person who has been awarded monetary compensation but has not received it would be able to file an appeal seeking enhanced compensation as an indigent or not. An indigent person, let me tell you, is someone who does not have the financial means to pay the court fee and proceed with the suit filed. The provision in CPC allows indigent plaintiffs to delay paying court fees while the lawsuit is in progress. If the court rules in their favour, then they must pay the court fees they would have owed if they had not been granted indigent status initially. This benevolent provision is designed to assist poor litigants who are otherwise unable to afford the requisite court fees to initiate a lawsuit. In the present case, the appellant got injured in an accident and subsequently approached the Motor Accident Claims Tribunal for compensation. Contending that she had sustained permanent disablement, she had filed a claim of 10 lakh rupees. However, the tribunal awarded her around 2 lakhs. 
aggrieved by this she filed an appeal in the high court against the tribunal's order along with this appeal she also filed an application seeking permission to file the appeal as an indigent person but the high court had refused to entertain it noting that she had been awarded the compensation importantly at the same time the high court also acknowledged in its order that no amount had been received by her yet it is against this backdrop the matter came before the supreme court now the bench of justices jk maheshwari and sanjay karol have opined that the high court was incorrect in dismissing the application even after recording that she had not received the compensation while setting aside the order of the high court the apex court provided two main reasons for the same first the claimant had not yet received any money and therefore at the time of filing the appeal she could be considered as indigent and second that statutory requirements under cpc which mandates an inquiry into the financial status of the person claiming indigence were not fulfilled this procedural step is crucial to determine if the claimant legitimately qualifies as an indigent person or not incidents of forced religious conversions in india consistently spark intense public debate and controversy these cases highlight the ongoing tensions between religious freedom and societal pressures and often lead to calls for stricter regulations and legal scrutiny in one such case the allahabad high court has denied bail to a mosque molvi accused of enticing a mentally unsound mind boy and forcibly keeping him in a madrasa after changing his religion The Malvi was arrested in February this year after being booked under IPC and Uttar Pradesh Prohibition of Unlawful Conversion of Religion Act. Seeking bail in this case, he moved the court, wherein his counsel argued that he had been made accused in the present matter based on a false allegation and that the alleged victim was mentally unsound and the applicant neither changed his religion nor compelled him. on the other hand the additional advocate general opposed the prayer for bail and submitted that the molvi not only allowed the mentally unsound boy who was a minor to change his religion but he after enticing him kept him in a madrasa and forcibly changed his religion given the seriousness of the allegations and the evidence presented the bench of justice samir jain refused to grant him bail The Delhi High Court today dismissed a plea seeking disqualification of Prime Minister Narendra Modi from contesting the 2024 general elections. The plea was filed by Captain Deepak Kumar alleging that Modi and his accomplices attempted to destabilize the national security by planning a fatal crash of an Air India flight in 2018 where he was a pilot. Kumar also said that Modi made a false oath which otherwise must be made after the nomination paper has been submitted to the RO. The plea also sought cancellation of the candidature of Union Home Minister Amit Shah and Union Civil Aviation Minister Jyotiraditya Sindhya. Kumar had also alleged that Modi was accused of destruction of evidence by influencing and playing an active role in the selling process of Air India Limited which cancelled his pilot license and ratings by fabricating his records of service. Justice Sachin Datta rejected the plea and stated that the petitioner made reckless and unsubstantiated allegations in the plea the purpose of which was to make scandalous allegations without any basis. the court said that the petition was tainted with malafide and oblique motives if you remember recently justice datta has dismissed two pleas against the prime minister one seeking his disqualification from contesting the polls and another seeking fir against him for allegedly delivering hate speeches in violation of the model code of conduct in another case related to religious conversion the allahabad high court has stayed the arrest of a lady school teacher who has been accused of trying to convert a 10th class student to christianity and pressuring him to have a sexual relationship with her a bench of justice rajiv gupta and justice shiv shankar prasad granted relief after the counsel for the accused told the court that an independent inquiry had been conducted into the matter which revealed that the minor boy's allegations against the teacher were manufactured According to the report of the inquiry which was conducted on the instructions of the school principal it was recorded that on the occasion of a dance competition the student took the lady teacher's mobile number 
Then by making fake IDs using her mobile phone, the student started chatting on fake IDs and even started putting mental pressure on her. Further, when the matter was highlighted, the minor boy started leveling allegations of establishing a sexual relationship with his teacher, which was without any basis. The report also noted that though the child is minor, however, he is a mentally strong person and is dominating over the others. Against this backdrop, the court has now sought the state's response to the petition seeking quashing of the case. The court also directed the Commissioner of Police Kanpur to transfer the investigation to a cyber cell. The Madras High Court in an important judgment has observed that the Motor Vehicles Act is a beneficial legislation and should be interpreted in favour of the affected person. This particular case relates to the death of a 17-year-old minor in a road accident involving two motorcycles driven by minors. The deceased was travelling as a pillion rider with his friend on a motorcycle when they crashed into another motorcycle rashly driven by another minor. The family of the deceased claimed an insurance amount of 50 lakhs with an interest rate of 12% from the insurance company they had bought a life insurance scheme from. The company refused to provide the insurance stating that both the drivers were minors, thus going against their terms and conditions. In response, the family approached the Motor Accidents Claims Tribunal Chennai to address their grievance. The tribunal noted that since the vehicles were ridden by minors, the terms and conditions of the company had been violated and it held the insurance company liable for a relaxed compensation. The compensation was granted and the insurance company was asked to later recover the 50% of amount from the families of the drivers. Challenging the decision, two appeals were filed in the High Court seeking to review the judgment of the learned tribunal. First by the family of the deceased requesting to increase the compensation and the other by the insurance company to set aside the order of the tribunal. The High Court has now upheld the petitioner's arguments. It took cognizance of the fact that the deceased had great future prospects and the amount awarded by the tribunal would not be enough. The court has thus directed the insurance company to pay increased compensation to the family of the deceased. If you wish to know more details about the cases I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.